It's Friday and week three of our challenge series here on the channel, and I have someone special with me to announce this week's challenge. What's up everyone? My name's Greg, and this week we're gonna be cloning. Yeah, we are. Now, the great thing about using the cloning technique is that you learn a lot of other skills and tricks that go along with it, from masking, keyframing, and working with layers. It can also be used in reverse, so actually removing objects from your frame that you don't want there. So say somebody walks in behind you while you're doing an interview, you can actually get rid of them using this same technique. If you wanna join in on this week's challenge, all you need to do is post a short clip using the cloning technique that I'm about to teach you and tag it with at LensProtigo as well as hashtag LensProtigo at home. And I'm gonna be picking one winner to get a $250 gear credit as well as sharing a bunch of my favorites on next week's episode. Now let's get into the tips and start learning how to clone. So this technique is actually pretty easy. What you're gonna do is basically shoot a bunch of separate clips. In my case, it was three for the intro that you just saw. I had my main talking clip, the one where I introduced me, and the one of me jumping up behind us. You take all of those and layer them together and composite them in post. And it's a really cool effect that doesn't take a lot of time to pull off. But I do have some tips and tricks to help make it a little bit easier and to have it come out looking a little more realistic. One of the things that's really important to do is keep consistent lighting. So try to avoid using daylight because over time that light is gonna change direction and it's gonna change where the shadows are and how your subjects are actually lit. Now I'm using a two by two panel here and if we switch the light over to show kind of a dramatic change in lighting and I'll have my clone come in with a light coming from a different direction. You can see how weird it looks with me having a light coming from this side and the other me having light coming from that side. They just don't match and it can make it a lot harder to blend these two shots together. The next thing that you need to do is lock down your camera on a tripod. You don't wanna have the frame moving around because if you move the frame, these shots are not gonna line up. And when we go to blend them together, even if you just bump your camera a little, it's gonna be very noticeable, just like this. And you can get rid of it, but it's gonna take a lot more post-processing work to match these two shots together. So that's really all you need to do to be able to achieve the cloning effect. Now I have a couple things to make the process a little bit easier. The first one is plan it out. Know what your dialogue lines are gonna be, especially if you're interacting back and forth with your other clone. If you're doing that, you'll also be able to plan out specifically where each of your clones are gonna be, so you can make sure they don't overlap, which leads into the next tip. Make sure to leave space in between each of your clones. This way, it's gonna be pretty easy to put a mask in between the two of them and blend those shots together. Now it is possible to reach over behind your other clone, it's just gonna be a much harder process once you get into post-production. And then lastly, a few things to make the cloning even more realistic. First is work on delivery and acting like the other person is actually there. If they come into the room, turn and face them. You wouldn't just stare straight ahead, you would look over to them and acknowledge that they're there. And react to the words that they're saying, don't just stare blankly. The next one, which kind of falls in line with the same thing, is really focus on the timing. If you're interacting back and forth with your clone, you wanna make sure that you're not overlapping each other when you're talking. It can be helpful to actually have someone read out the lines off camera to you to get the pacing right. And the last thing is make small changes to each of your clones, like the shirt you're wearing, maybe throw on a pair of glasses, or even put on a hat, just to make each of these variations of yourself look a little bit different, so it's not an exact replica, and it can make it seem more legit, because people don't often wear the exact same thing. So those are all of my tips for actually shooting. Now let's get onto the computer and I'll show you how to put all of this together. So the post process for doing this cloning technique is actually super simple. Now I've already pulled all of my footage off of the card, put it on my computer and loaded it into a Premiere Pro project. So we're gonna start from there and I'll show you exactly what you have to do to sort of blend all of these and composite these layers together. So in Premiere, I've already pulled up a sequence or a timeline that has all of the clips. So I have the first one here, which is my talking clip. I have the second one, which is where I walk in. And then I have the third one of me kind of popping up in the background. Now, the first thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is separate all of these clips onto different layers. So I'm gonna drag my second clip onto my second layer and third clip onto my third layer, along with all of the audio. So now that we have them on all separate layers, we can start lining them up so they actually start playing when we want them to play. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab this second clip here on video layer two, and we're just gonna scrub over until we get to a point where we want that track to come in. Now I'm looking at the uh, dialogue box here in the audio underneath. To make sure that my audio starts right after my first one ends because that's where we want this one to pick up. And then we'll start right at the beginning of when I just come into frame. 
So that looks pretty good right there. Now the next thing that we can do is go over to the opacity. We can turn off the keyframe because we're not gonna be keyframing the opacity here. And then just dial that down to like 50%. This way you're gonna be able to see both video tracks at the exact same time, and it's gonna make it easier to do this masking. The next thing that we're gonna do is go over to the effects window, and we're just gonna grab a crop, drop that on the video clip two, so the second layer, the one that's on top. And then over on the effects panel here, where we actually control it, we're just gonna bring in one of the crops from the left side. We'll put it somewhere about in the middle. That's looking pretty good. And now we can turn that opacity layer back up so that we're seeing the full video. So let's just scrub through this and see how this looks. So right off the bat, you can see it's kind of cutting my hand off right here. And then as we scrub through it, now it's cutting my shoulder off on the other video clip. So we're gonna have to do some keyframe movements. So basically adjusting where the crop is as the video plays on. So let's go back to the beginning here. We'll start off with where my hand's getting cut. Click on that second video layer again. And we're gonna go over to the keyframe left. We're gonna turn on the keyframe here and then adjust our crop so that it is not cutting my hand off. So that's looking pretty good right there. And then as we scrub forward, we can start to see where it starts to cut off the second clone that's coming in. So it's starting to hit on his leg right here. So now we're just gonna go back over to that layer and the keyframe is already turned on. So all we have to do is change the adjustment. So let's change it from 70% to somewhere in between. So it's not cutting either of them. 66% looks pretty good. We can keep going. And now it's hitting me again and my hand has moved further away. So we can move that over one more time. Right about there looks pretty good. And then for the rest of this, neither of us go over that line. Now you can see a pretty obvious line in the background here that kind of separates the two clips based on how the shadows were and where the light was. So an easy way to fix this is just to feather that edge out. So if we click on that second layer clip again, we can go over to the edge feather, and then we'll just bring that up until it kind of disappears. And there you go, that line is almost completely gone, and you can't even tell that this was two videos stacked on top of each other. So that's a really quick and easy way of doing this sort of cloning technique. So now let's go ahead and grab the third clip, which has the last person on it. We're just gonna drag that over so it lines up where we want it to come on. And we can go ahead and turn down the opacity again, just to see kind of where we need to start drawing these crop marks and masks. So as you can see, it's already overlapping a little bit of my front two people. This is where it becomes a little more complicated to mask somebody out, is when they're behind another object or behind something else that you've already cloned. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and drop that crop on there again, go ahead and grab the free draw bezier, and then let's just draw a quick line around my hand here down the table, up with my elbow, and kind of just have this send off into the top up here, and then back down my other arm. So now that we have that mask, let's go back over to the opacity. We'll crank that all the way up. We're gonna go back down to the mask properties, mark it inverted, and then grab the crop markers and just slide those all the way over. Doesn't matter which one you do, you could do the top, left, right, or bottom. It's gonna do the same effect. So now you can see that we have a pretty good rotoscope mask already around this, but the problem is when we start moving it and our subjects move, different video clips are going to get cut off. So what you're gonna have to do with this is basically start at the beginning, go into that mask path, we can go to maybe 200% here, zoom in and move each individual one. Make sure to turn on the mask path keyframe so every time you go ahead of frame and adjust these different points, it's going to automatically save it. So we can go in here, click on the mask, make those small adjustments. So let's close up the finger gap here. And then we can go ahead, head one frame. That's looking pretty good. Start to see some of my finger here. So let's go back in and adjust that one. And basically go through this whole process until you're completely up and you've covered the entire thing. So after you do all of that keyframing, basically frame by frame, moving and adjusting those different points, you're gonna get something that looks like this. This can definitely be time consuming, so take that into account when you're shooting and actually staging your different clones to make sure that they're not overlapping. And once you've done that for the entire clip and all the different cloning layers that you have, you're gonna get something that'll look like this.
I can't wait to see what you guys create with this cloning technique. If you want to get involved in that challenge, make sure to go on Instagram and share your video or photo and tag it with at LensPro2Go and hashtag LensPro2Go at home. I hope you guys learned some amazing tips and hopefully you'll be able to take this out into your work after this little challenge is over. And if you want to check out the other challenges that we've done, go check out the playlist, which I'll throw a link to up here as well as at the end of the video. If you have any questions, make sure to let me know in the comments. Don't forget to like this video, share it, subscribe, do all those things, and I'll see you in the next one.